Hello all, welcome to Selenium Python training series. In this session, as part of Selenium WebDriver, I am going to practically demonstrate how to print the entire table using Selenium Python automation. So let's get started. For demonstration, I'll take this example web page where we have a sample table available. I'll copy this URL and open in the browser. And let me show you that sample table that I would like to retrieve and print in the output console. Okay, here is a sample table. The entire table I would like to retrieve from this page and print in the output console. For that, how to write the Selenium Python script? For that, I'll switch to this PyCharm IDE where we have some sample Selenium Python code for opening the Chrome browser for maximizing the browser window. And here we have to open the application URL. So in this uh, git command, I'll copy this application URL where this table is available. Okay. Then after pasting the application page URL where this table is available, then what I want to do is in order to retrieve this entire table and print in the output console, first we have to find out how many rows are there in this table. I have to write some logic here for printing this entire table. I have to write some logic. So let's write uh, the code for finding the number of rows in the table. So I'll go here and uh, I'll just create an XPath expression using which we can get, you know, the number of rows. Already covered all this stuff in the previous sessions, like how to find the number of rows and columns. So I'm going to repeat that. Inspect this uh, table here and uh, go to the selector sub or you can even use the Google Chrome DevTools if this is not available. Let's select this table and create an XPath expression for locating the table. Table at the rate ID is equal to give the ID of the table, table one. And uh, this will locate the entire table. In this table, how many rows are there? To find that, I have to create this XPath expression saying T R. You see, five. There are five rows in this table. You see, one, two, three, four, five rows. This XPath expression is returning me five elements. That is, the count is five, right? Copy this XPath expression and write down the code here. That is a driver dot find. Instead of element, you take elements. Then say by dot XPath. Give the XPath expression of that, uh, okay? That XPath, which is returning you the uh, kind of rows. Rows as the element here. We are getting rows. How to find the rows count then? How to find the rows count? In order to find the rows count, you just, this is a list of elements, right? Uh, in list, if you want to find how many elements are stored in this list, you have to use len function, len and say rows. That's it. Uh, sorry, I have to write in this way. Rows count is equal to len of, len of rows. That's it. Okay. This will get you the number of rows. That is five will be coming here. Now, similarly, I need to, as a next step, I need to find the number of columns in the table. For columns in the table, instead of writing tr here, write double slash th. This will give you the number of table headings. And since the number of columns are equal to the number of table headings, we have the three coming here. I'll copy this XPath expression, which is which is returning the column count three here. So I'll go here and write down driver dot find elements. Again, elements, guys, don't take element. By dot XPath. Give the XPath expression, which will give the list of columns. Columns is equal to, I would like to find the number of columns for that. I'll say column underscore count is equal to len of columns like this. You have to find the number of columns. Once you find the number of rows and once you find the number of columns, now you have to write some logic using which you can print the entire table into the output console. I'll write the logic something like this for, let's say R stands for row for R in range of Okay, for R in range of R should start with one. Why I'm giving all this for and all the stuff is uh, there is a reason before writing this logic. To understand this for loop, you have to understand one XPath expression. I'll go back here and I'll first uh, create that XPath expression. Once I create it, right, you'll understand this logic. What I want to do here is if I want to find, okay, if you want to get the data from this first row or something like that, I have to write something like this TR of one double slash TH. Right, you see, three elements are coming, name, age, place. And if I want to find this uh, first row in this table body, then here, I have to say TD. You see, Kishore 22 Delhi is coming. If I give TR of two TD, in that case, this is coming. If I give TR of three of TD, this is coming. If I give TR of four of TD, it's all about XPath expressions, guys. If you're good with XPath expressions, you'll understand everything here. 
So if I give th and tr of one means in the t head, th will be there, right? In the first row will be there. Second row will not be there for th. You see, it will not return you anything. For th means up to tr one, it is possible. For uh, these things, for table data thing, if I give td means it will start with one, one, two, three, four, right? In the t body we have first row, second row, third row. I fourth row like this. Okay, these what are the two x path expressions you have to look into that. For that, we have to write the logic here for R in range of so we'll start from where here tr of one, two, three, four, tr of one th. Okay, one, two, three, four, or one th. In case of td, it is one, two, three, four. Tr is one, two, three, four. In case of th, it is only one. Whatever it may be, R is possible. Possibility of R is from one to rows plus one. You have to give rows plus one. And that is rows count plus one. Okay. Rows count plus one. What is the rows count? Five. Five plus one is how much? Six. Why I'm giving intentionally I'm giving six because this range will work in such a way that one, two, this part minus one. So this five plus one, six, six minus one is five. So one to five. R will be iterating from one to five. That's the reason I'm writing the logic like this. Fine. So that means R will go from one to five because of this logic. Okay. Then what next per C means column, let's say C in range of inner for loop I'm writing C in range of one, two. Okay. Again, the same thing, column count plus one you have to give. You understand the logic, right? Why I'm writing column plus count because the range will take from one to this part minus one that will become column count. That is three. That means C will be from one to three. It will be iterating from one to three. That is columns. Here rows will be iterating from there are five rows. So one, two, three, four, five. In that one, two, three will be the columns. Inner for loop is for columns. The external for loop is for rows. After that, what I want to do? There's a situation here. Okay. So if uh, if R is equal to one means specifically this is a first row. In that case, X path expression should be of TR of one TH only. Right? TR of one TH. So I'll give the X path expression here. I'll write down driver dot find element. I'll say pi dot X path. I'll give the X path. Just carefully observe I'm, how I'm creating this X path expression. I'll copy this X path expression here. Copy the entire X path expression and paste it here. Okay. So here, this uh, here I'll write the logic. If if R is equal to one, if R is equal to one, then R is equal to one, then this should be the element. Okay. Driver dot find element with this element, we'll be retrieving that tier of one th. And here th of C, I have to say. If I give th means the entire, you see, tier of one th means this this is getting located. Three table headings are getting located. If I give th of one means the name table heading got located. If I give th of two means h uh, is getting located. If I give th of three means Place is getting located. I have to copy this and uh, you know paste it here, right? Tr of one, th, th of one, two, three, whatever it is, but tr should be one only. So if r is equal to one, I can replace this one with r. In this case, I can replace this one with r. For that, I'll just uh, create this uh, dynamic x path expression by writing you know plus symbols before this, before and after this uh, one, like this. This is the logic we have to write, guys. There is no other way. And here, before the plus symbol, provide double quote. From here is the string. And I'm going to concatenate the string with this one. And the later part is here. From here to here is the ending part of the string. And here I cannot concatenate in Python, I cannot concatenate string with uh, some number. But to convert that into string, I'll say str of this one. Okay. So here instead of one, I'll give this r. Okay. If r is equal to one only, it will come right. Then r I'll give. Simply r is one, it will come. That's it. This will get you. Here three is also need to be customized. Okay, three is it's not always three, right? It maybe may you know uh, C can be one two three, right? So it's better to provide C here, and before that you just put plus symbols here, and uh, provide the double quote and uh, double quote for uh, making it hard. Uh, I mean, you know, dynamic. And here str of C you have to write. This is the logic you have to implement. Then it's going to work. Dynamic x path expression. Now I'll say data is equal to some data is equal to, and. Uh, here, I'll write down print data. Okay, I'll simply say print data. That's it. Else, if it's, if R is not equal to one, in that case, 
there's a problem here if r is equal to 2 let's say and uh, here i need to get td right from here onwards i have to get from second row onwards i have to get three td let's see whether kishore 22 delhi will come with this chair of uh, thing td no it's not coming kishore is not coming because under t body the first row is kishore thing so it's better give one now it will work again it should start from tier but by this time the r has already became two for r is equal to one it's taking th right but uh, for R is equal to 2 onwards, I have to go to TD. But here, tier of 2 will go to manage. So how to programmatically manage this one? There is a logic here. Driver dot just observe this logic, what I am trying to write. By dot x path, give the x path expression and write on this. Write on this TD thing. And uh, here TD of 1, if I say TD of 1 means what's coming, let's see. He sure is coming, but here tier of 1 is there. Copy this. And here in double quotes, give that x. I'll make this dynamic again. Here, when tr of 1 is there, but r is equal to 1 will not come here into the else block because if r is equal to 1, it will go here. But if r is equal to, will come to the else block. So here, if in place of 1, if I give r here, there's a problem. What is the problem? Let's give that r first of all. What is the problem here? If I give r is equal to r here, it will start from 2, but I want a tr of 1. For td also, I want tr of 1, but here 2 is coming. And convert this to this tier of r here okay so here one will come means there is a problem because uh, with one we cannot get that okay but it's not possible because when r is equal to one will go here it will not come here when r is equal to two will come to the else block in that case if r is equal to two comes right you just say minus one in case of r is equal to two minus one will become one and we'll be able to get the things right here instead of hard coding this one i'll make it dynamic Put double quotes here, double put double quotes here, and here in place of the one, write down steer of one, and in place of the one, give this, give what, give C, directly give C. Okay, that's enough. Like this, you have to make this expat. If you are good with this expat expressions, you can do whatever you want with the tables. Okay, then what else? Then I have to print, print the data. Here again, I'll say data. Here also I have to print the data. Okay, I have to print the data. Here I am printing the data. Here also I am printing the data, whatever it is. Now, now if I run this script, what will happen? Let's see. Okay, let's print the script. Uh, let's print. Uh, let's run the script and see what is happening. Whether the entire table data is coming, uh, entire table is getting coming in the output and printing or not. Let's see. Whether the entire table is getting printed in the output console or not. Let's see. I'm running it. It's opening the browser. You see, the elements are getting printed, okay? The elements are getting printed. I don't want the elements. I want the text of this element. So what I will do here is, instead of printing the data here, I'll say data dot text. Data dot text in this case, okay? This is the next step. I don't want to print the web elements. I want to print the text. Text between the tags of those elements. Run the script. You see, now the entire table is getting printed. Name, age, place. First row, Kishore 22 Delhi, Manish 25 Pune, Pravin 29 Bangalore, Deep 31 Mumbai got printed, the entire table got printed, but it's not printed in the tabular format, rather it got printed like this. So how to how to make this print in a proper way? For that to print in a proper way here, instead of printing and going to the new line, right, I'll just add something like this, okay? If you remember Python, I explained this, right? Write like this, okay? Comma, end is equal to, stay in the same line. Comma, end is equal to, so after printing this, it will stay in the same line. Okay. Now run the script. What's happening? Let's see. This time, what is happening? Let's see. Based on the output, we'll customize. You see, every data got printed, complete table got printed in a single line. Name, age, place, Kishore 22, Delhi, Manish 25, Pune, Pravin 29, Bangalore, Deepthi 31, Mumbai. So what I would like to give is for every data that got retrieved from the table, I would like to give it a space here. So instead of giving normal end here, I'm just adding a space here. Okay. Here also space I'm adding. Now let's see what will happen. Here between each and every uh, data cell, uh, space will come. You see, name, space, age, space, place. This looks a bit better, but it's not a tabular format. But let's say after name, age, place, I want to go to the new line. So that means after the inner for loop, I have to go to the new line. How to go to the new line after the inner for loop? Here, write print. Okay. 
after the inner for loop, write print. It will take you to the new line. Okay. As part of the external for loop, after the inner for loop is done, this print statement will be executed where it will go to the new line. That means after name age place got printed by this uh, inner for loop, it will go to the new line. And uh, again, the inner for loop will uh, print Kishore 22 Delhi. Again, this print statement will take you to the new line. Let's run this and see what's happening. Whether it's printing the entire table or not, let's see. In the tabular format. You see, the, now the entire table got printed in the tabular format. Name, age, place, Kishore 22 Delhi, Manish 25 Pune, Paravind 29 Bangalore, Deepthi 31 Mumbai. So the entire table, we are able to retrieve and print in the output console with this logic. This is the logic we have to write here, okay? This is the logic we have to write from here to here. Okay, so copy this. And I'll put it here. The practical demonstration. Let's put that here. So that you can see the logic from this, okay? Just drag it here so that we can see the statements not getting broken. Still have to drag it. Now it looks good, right? Those columns, the logic looks good now. You can implement this logic to get the output, okay? This is logic. So hope guys you understood how to write the Selenium Python script for retrieving the entire table and printing into the output console of the ID, okay? Printing the entire table using Selenium Python. This is the code, guys, we have to write. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye.